Hey, I just want to let you know that this video is part of a larger course called Operating Systems 101 on CyberTrainingPro.com. So if you enjoy the content, you want to see the rest of the course, or you want to see other courses that we have or our career services, make sure to check out CyberTrainingPro.com. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. All right, let's get started. Okay, now we're going to install Windows 11 as a virtual machine on our system. So the first thing that you need to do is go to Google, and we're going to search for Windows 11 ISO. And then you'll get this first link here. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we're going to scroll down here. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the ISO file here. So we're going to select this drop down box. And we're going to select Windows 11 multi edition ISO for x64 devices. And we're going to hit download now. Then we're going to select the product language. I'm going to be doing this in English. So I'll select English United States and hit confirm. All right, so this says the link is valid for 24 hours. That's cool, but we're just gonna click it right now and we're gonna download the ISO. All right, so once you've downloaded the ISO for Windows 11, go ahead and open up your hypervisor software. If you haven't already installed one, you need to go ahead and do that before continuing this video. I'm going to be using Workstation Pro 17 for all these videos and installations. We're gonna select create a new virtual machine. You could also go to file and select new virtual machine up here. We're going to do a typical installation, so we'll hit next. Need to browse to where the ISO is, so that's the file you just downloaded. Go ahead and select that, and we'll hit next. You need to give it a name. You also need to give it a location of where you're going to install it, and hit next. Now, with Windows 11, it does require a trusted platform module to operate, which basically means that it's going to encrypt the hard drive. In previous versions of VMware Workstation, this actually required an extra step to add that TPM module, but in this version, in version 17, you don't actually have to do that. It's already added as part of the features once it detects that you're installing Windows 11. So we're going to select only the files needed to support a TPM are encrypted, and then we need to enter in a password. And we'll remember it in the credential manager and hit next. We're gonna leave the size default for 64 gigabytes, and then you can either store the virtual disk as a single file or split the virtual disk into multiple files. We're going to leave it as the default, splitting it into multiple files and hit next. Then you can customize the hardware. So if you want to change the amount of RAM or the amount of processors, anything like that, you can do that. We're going to give it a little bit more RAM just so we have a little bit more power under the hood and we'll hit close. And then if you have this bottom checkbox checked then it will actually power on the virtual machine once it is created. So we'll hit finish. Now, one thing that I noticed previously when I tried to install this ISO file is I did get this timeout error. So how I solved that was I went up to shut down guest. So I shut down the guest and then I selected power on this virtual machine and I just restarted it. And then just to make sure I selected the screen and I hit return, really any key just to boot into the installation process. All right, so you need to select your language to install, the time and currency format, and the keyboard input method. So these are all correct for me, so I'm gonna hit next and install now. All right, so now it wants you to activate Windows. For our use, we're not gonna do this. We don't need to enter in a product key. It'll let us use it basically in an evaluation type setup. So we'll just select, I don't have a product key. And then you need to select your version of Windows 11 that you wanna install. Typical installations in an enterprise are most likely gonna be Windows 11 Pro, just the standard version here. You can select one of the other versions if you wanna try it out, but if you're following along, that's the version that we're installing. So we'll select that and hit next. And then agree to the terms and hit next. Now you can upgrade your installation if you already had an installation of Windows on your system. We don't, this is a brand new virtual hard drive. So we need to select custom install Windows only. You can see this is the only partition that we have on here. So we'll make sure that's selected and then hit next. Once this is done installing, we will check back in. All right, so now we need to select our country or region. I'm gonna select the United States and select yes. 
make sure the keyboard input is correct. This is US for me, so I'm gonna select yes again. I'm not gonna add a second keyboard layout. You totally can if you want to, but I'm gonna hit skip. Now we need to name our device. This is also called the host name on a lot of systems. So go ahead and give your system a name. And I'm gonna name it number one, just in case we decide that we wanna add some other workstations. And then hit next. All right, so we're gonna select setup for work or school because basically all these installations and demos and everything, we are doing them in the context of an enterprise. So we'll select next. And we're actually gonna select sign in options and domain join instead. Now this initial account is the account that is going to have administrator access on it. So keep that in mind when you're setting this up. Typically in an enterprise, we wouldn't give a normal user this account. We might create them a local account, but it wouldn't be this particular account. So we're gonna go ahead and name this account and I'm gonna call it local admin. Then I'm gonna hit next. And then we have to put a password in. This is gonna make us answer three different questions. So make sure that you go ahead and answer these. All right, so for the privacy settings, we're gonna turn all these off because this is just a lab environment. So we'll go through and disable all of these and hit accept. Realistically, you probably would do that in an enterprise anyways by turning all those off because it's a lot of extra stuff that in an enterprise you're probably not gonna use. It's more for personal use that you might want those features. Okay, when you first install Windows 11 or Windows operating systems, it does have an initial setup period where it goes through and does some configurations and setup processes. So we'll give this a little bit of time and then we'll check back in once this is done. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At Cyber Training Pro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. Okay, so typically what I'll do now once I've installed the operating system is I want to actually install the VMware tools. So I'm going to make this not full screen, and then I'm gonna select Install Tools. Now by installing the VMware tools, this gives you some additional capabilities and some interactions and integrations with your system. So it's usually a good idea to install these tools. And we're going to select Run Setup 64 and select yes. So this is really just like any installation that you might have done before. It's very basic. We'll select next. We're gonna do a typical installation, select next. Select install. And again, this just adds some capabilities and functionality that are useful when you're using your VMware. You don't have to do it, but it is recommended. And you can see it changed the resolution, so it's starting to make it more interactive and integrated with my system. So we're gonna hit finish. It does make us reboot the system, so we'll select yes. All right, so now we need to log in with that local admin and password. Okay, so now we're logged in. Typically, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the start menu, and I'm gonna type update. Then we're gonna select check for updates. Typically the ISO files are pretty up to date, but it's not uncommon for there to be a few patches or something that we have to update. So we're gonna select check for updates. The older the ISO file that you're using, obviously the more updates and things that you're gonna to have to install, that's why it's typically best to get the latest and greatest release of the ISO file. 
as you can see with this one, we had four different updates that we need to actually install. Now we're installing the latest patches because of security and best practices. In the real world, you obviously want to have an up-to-date system and we're not gonna be hacking into this system, so we want it to be current on its patch levels. So we have this preview here that we can install. Now you can install that update preview if you want or not, it really doesn't matter. We're going to, and we left this get latest updates unchecked just so we can kind of control things. But again, we're just trying to get a fully patched and current system, All right? So now we're gonna log back in. And I always go back into the update section just to make sure that it's showing that we are currently up to date on patching. So if this doesn't automatically start checking for updates, then you can definitely hit this check for updates button and it will check it. So we'll hit that real quick just to double check. And as you can see, there are updates that are still showing up here that we need to actually get onto this system. And then now we are current. Great. So the final thing for the setup of a virtual machine that I'll do is I will go to the VM option here and we need to create a snapshot. A snapshot is basically a point in time backup of the entire system. So that way if anything goes wrong or you need to go back to a certain point in time, you can restore that snapshot or revert that snapshot and that will take the system back to that point. It's basically like a backup that you would do on any type of system with all the data and everything inside of it. So we're gonna select take a snapshot and we're gonna name this. Typically what I'll name this is something like the date and then fully installed with patches. And then what I also like to do in this kind of environment where it is a lab environment and I'm installing virtual machines just for the lab, right? Not for production or anything like that. Then I will also include user information like the user account and the password. And that way, if I ever have to go back to that information, I have that information easily accessible. I don't have to try to remember which username and password that I used. So go ahead and do that, take your snapshot, and then when that's finished, you're good to go. You have successfully completed the installation and setup of this system. Go ahead, take snapshot. And now we have a snapshot of our system, so if anything goes wrong, we can come back to this original version and it will be like we just set it up from scratch and we can just start doing whatever we need to do again. So I'll go ahead and stop this virtual machine and that concludes this installation setup.